We continue in the twelfth letter. Trying to understand. In the spiritual realm, you have water on the right, fire on the on the left. The angel Michal, Michael. The angel Gabriel, Gabriel. Our fire and water. <laughs> As the saying goes. Spiritual fire and water, not physical, of course. And of course, the physical fire and water is devolving from the spiritual. <clears throat> and um, either water puts out the fire, or water, I mean fire, evaporates the water. They're complete opposites. One is kindness, one is chesed gvura. Chesed on the right, sar machol, is top down, like water flowing down the mountain, flowing with indiscriminate giving. And then on the left, fire going up, for fire not to be destructive, it needs to be harnessed, contained. That's contraction. That's power. Power is to be able to contain, contract, hold, bite your tongue. That's powerful. Restrain is power. Self-restraint. <clears throat> and um, but the two are op complete opposites. One is very giving. The other one is very measured. So, how are we going to get the forces above, the divine attributes, to, you know, I don't know, get along is the right word, <laughs> not the right word, but to make peace. So, it's a Kodesh Baruch Hu, who can make peace between them. The Holy One, blessed be He, God. In other words, God, His light that is called Kaddish, holy, which means it is an encompassing light that is far greater than the particular light of the attributes of God, of his kindness, of his um, restraint, uh, self-restraint. It's much more all encompassing. So what can what's it, something all encompassing can encompass two opposites. So he's able to bring two opposites together. Why? Because he transcends them. Because Kaddish, meaning holy, meaning transcendent, that's what holy is, transcendent, has the capability of incorporating two opposites together. Right? And therefore they can become truly unified. The power of God to give and the power of God to Hold back. They become unified in this manner. What's a metaphor for this? You can have a king in his kingdom having two ministers. Right? One is the finance minister. I'm giving this an example. Finance minister versus the uh, employment minister, let's say, or agricultural minister. Oh. They want to spend the money. He wants to make sure there's enough funds in for the king, when, you know, for a rainy day or whatever. So they don't get along so well. And they have a different perspective on what they need to do with the funding of the kingdom. So there's enmity between them even. But when they stand before the king, they're the best of friends. They're the best of friends because their enmity dissolves because the king, talking about this is a metaphor, maybe not every king's this way, but the metaphor of this is, yeah, the king is beyond the two of them and therefore can incorporate the two opposite of, um, feelings that they have and how best to serve the kingdom. So that's the metaphor. What does that mean on high then? What does it mean for you and I? Okay, beautiful. 
That means that the Gvura on the left, right, the angel Gabriel, will be tempered. In other words, refraining, holding back, judgment, discerning whether you deserve, don't deserve, right, will be mellowed. Well, actually, what's called sweetened. Hamtakas Gvura. So it will be the sweetening of the severities of the judgment. Because on the left side would be, you know, you go fully on based on judgment. You know, you worked, you get paid. You don't work, you don't get paid. Not, nothing wrong with that, by the way. Right? Nothing wrong with that. It's an important kind of thing in life, right? Because if you don't work and you get paid, then why work? Why be a productive person? So, yes, there is place for that. But then there is times that we need to sweeten that severe judgment. Not in that case necessarily, or maybe even in that case, right? And we need to develop a new character quality, and it's called compassion, mercy. Right? Let me explain. We've had this idea before. What does mercy mean? What does compassion mean? As opposed to kindness. Kindness means it's about me. This is the about me being kind, ir- irrespective of you and your needs. I'm. It's my birthday, and I'm celebrating. Drinks are on me. Dinner is on me. Right? You deserve it. Don't deserve it. It's coming to you. Not coming to you. It doesn't matter. Kindness is about my feeling, prompted by the love. Right? That therefore I'm acting in this kind, indiscriminating way. As opposed to the left side is very discriminating. Right? You work the you work the five hours that we made up that you'd work, so you're gonna get paid. You're gonna get paid your hundred and fifty dollars. But if you didn't do it, you didn't spend the five hours, you only spent two hours, so you're gonna get for the two hours. Okay. What is compassion? Compassion, we call it, be- the Kabbalists call it beauty because it's a, a it's a, uh, a, a an amalgamation of both chesed and gvura. Chesed is indiscriminate giving. Compassion is an indiscriminate in the sense that you take into consideration the person's situation. It is pitiful. Oh, you mean there's a person there that you are looking at? and that you are relating to. Pitiful state. That's a judgment. Right? We need to make judgments. Right? Not judging people necessarily or whatever, but we need to. It's a pitiful state this person's in. Right? So that's a judgment. Um, now, from that judgment, I mean, they, they don't have. They're, they're lacking. They're missing. They need. That's, that, that's a judgment. But again, from kindness... Whether they have, they don't have. Uh, oh, it's my birthday. I'm, I'm, you know, so you're not, you're not looking at that. That's not what kindness means in, in the pure sense of the way we understand it in Kabbalistic teachings. Of course, the way anybody uses the word kindness could be uh, any way they want, right? But that's not our point here, right? In the colloquial sense. Uh, discussion we're going to have shortly. I just want to get through through this. Um, Topic. So, therefore, here there is a judgment that's made in, in, in the, you know, the sorrowful, pitiful state that this individual, that they're lacking, they're missing. And that judgment is on the left side, right? But yet, you give, which is the right side. So, it's a compilation of the two, which that is compassion. What are you giving? Not giving because... Freely, give, freely giving, irrespective of the state of the person? No. You're taking into consideration the state of the person. And you made a judgment about it. And you're giving. So it's a compilation of the two. And that's called. That's why the Kabbalists call it Tiferet, beauty. Because beautiful means when you can bring two opposites together and meld them together, to make something beautiful, like in colors, right? Different colors and bring them together. You have a beautiful painting that is harmonious. So you're bringing two different qu- 
qualities and making them harmonious. And this is in reference to the divine name Havaya. Right? Yudke Vavke, Yudene Ravavanehe, the Tetragrammaton, name Havaya, uh, which appears in the Torah unqualified, refers to this attribute of divine compassion, as uh, the Zohar explains. So this is the idea over here that the divine attributes, two opposites, two angels that are opposite, that they can coalesce, they can come together. Why? Because the Kodesh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be He, meaning God's encompassing light, that it transcends the individual qualities of the divine nature or the divine attributes, are able to coalesce, bring the two together, and therefore temper a harsh judgment and make it sweet. That's what it means. Oh, say shalom be my mom. Right? Who oh, yes, say shalom. Well, okay, that's not that's not the um we're just gonna go with that part because that's the right. He is the one who makes peace. God. And this is the concept over here in, in the mystical Kabbalistic idea. Well, that's it for today's teachings, actually, short teachings. Any questions, any comments? I don't see any questions or any comments. Anybody has something to share? Please do. Alan, please share with us. Good to uh, see you, or hear you at least. <laughs> Yeah, good, good morning. Um, so I, um, I've been listening to, um, you're talking about um, chesed, about kindness and kabura, the discrimination, and, and, then, <clears throat> and then leading to compassion, which is an amalgam, as you say, of chesed and kabura. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> the way I see it is, is that is to bear it um, as compassion is more than an amalgam. It's a, it's really um, it's it's really a you know a chesed and gavura kind of getting together, but then in Tiferet it self organizes into something completely new. It's not like it's just a little bit of chesed, a little bit of gavura. Oh, a hundred percent correct. Like, Totally correct. It's an entirely new thing. Totally, that, totally, totally. That is that is a, that is a result of this kind of um, a godly self-organizing principle. Yeah. Uh, into into something that didn't exist before. You know. Um, yeah. That, uh, that is that although related to Chesed and Gabor, it's its own thing. So. Absolutely. It's, it's, Absolutely correct what you're saying. Absolutely so, correct. You said an amalgam. It's not, I, I don't see it as an amalgam, really. It's well, an amalgam. It's just a mixture. Uh, right. Okay. You're right. You're right. So um, thank you for pointing that out. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, you're right. It isn't merely a, an, it is an amalgam, but it isn't merely because it does produce, exactly like you said, a whole new quality. Right? A whole new quality. Compassion is not love it's not kindness and if and it's not gvura it's not you know judgment and 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 um with holding back it's has a bit of each then it's creating a new thing you know and maybe you could call it like you know um uh, the mother and the father they create a new child right ah is that new child uh uh, a 50-50 of the parents, yeah, but you know what? In the end, it's a new child, and it's not the, it's not the parent, <laughs> right? A new life and a new journey. So, yeah, absolutely correct. Thank you for pointing that out. I appreciate that. Okay, thank you for clarifying uh, that way. Oh, you clarified, not me. <laughs> uh, Eliana, please uh, share with us. Go ahead, Eliana. Oh, wait, there we go. Sorry, meat was on. Um, just a quick question, and maybe just to clarify it more in my mind, 
Reading Braces, which is my favorite book, but it begins, you know, obviously chapter one is creation, and we see the name Elohim. So mm-hmm. we know that creation was created through the aspect of guru or judgment um, or restriction. Which means, then, which is the idea of tsimtsum, contraction, right? Right. Holding back so, the light, holding back the light. Exactly. Right. right. So then we walk into the garden episodes or experiences, and we see the name um, Hawaii Melkim being used. Right. Um, so there's this aspect of there's compassion there in the garden. But then I'm, I'm curious because chapter four, when Cain is, uh, has killed Hevel, and we see only the name Havayim with as as God interacts with with Cain. So there's no aspect of even though it seems like that's the we, we kind of relate to that as God is judging him. He's kicking him out of Eden. He goes to the Eastern Node, um, but the only name that's used is Havayim. So is that? strictly coming out of love is that what that is telling us that's an excellent question uh, i i don't have it on the tip of my tongue to you know i don't want to say something that i'm, I'm not 100 percent correct um or at least that I'm, i feel comfortable that i i know for certain but it could very well that that's what that's what it means um but i have to see the verse and i don't have it in front of me so uh, okay. I'll have to look it up and, and, and then, you know, take a look. You know what, you'll send me, send me exactly what, what verse you're talking about so I could, uh, you know, take, uh, take note of it, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, thank you, thank you. Michael, please share with us. Before actually, I'm sorry. Before I um, lose the feed, just give me Michael a moment. I don't want to lose the feed over here. Um, the feed. Uh, okay. What attributes were contained in the clouds of glory, especially the cloud of fire? Uh, good question. You know, um, I, I have. I don't recall now offhand. I don't know. Keith uh, has a question. One second. Okay, Geetha, um, Geetha, your your question is not over here for us to answer in this context. Um, let's um, let us um, deal with that out of the context over here. Okay. Um, one second, Rachel, uh, would the unity of these two aspects become justice, the beauty and foundation, all showing the perfect unity of Hashem Echad? Uh, well, no, the unity is that it's creating compassion, you know, heavenly compassion. Um, it's not about foundation. Foundation, as you say, is a different attribute. But uh, it's, again, the coalescing of two opposites, bringing them together, creating a new entity that is uh, compassion, divine compassion, which we all need, right? <laughs> Michael, go ahead. Um, when, we, when we take um, raising a child as analogy, and it's always a parent who charges more and who loves more. And um, is it when, how, we, how we bring this the passion approach of raising a child, that, um, that I have to hold love back, that uh, be, because when I give too much love, um, uh, it's not good for the child. And also when I charge, I have to think about, oh, maybe I charge too hard, the child uh, already uh, behave better than before or this how can we bring this approach to bring both sides together that we have a compassionate approach of education raising a child how oh. boy no I, that's I, a uh, that's a real uh, excellent question but a very 
loaded and full and uh, you know a lot that you're uh, asking there but uh, you know that that itself is a whole you know um, just briefly first of all um, is judgment good so you know people say no you can't be judging well no there's a place for judgment there's a place is, how about indiscriminate giving is that good Say, whoa! Some people say that's wonderful. Other people say, oh, that's crazy. You can't be indiscriminately giving. That's not true. There are times you need to be. If you are a host and you have people in your home for dinner, so you're indiscriminately giving. You know, you you don't you say uh, you know for your own child that you're giving dinner. So uh, if they're uh, taking the fourth hot dog, um, you might say to them, you know what, you're going to get a stomachache. You know. The, now, if your guest took it, it may be that not your place to say that, you know. Um, but for your child, yes. For your host, as a host, you're indiscriminately giving whatever person takes, enjoy, right? For your child, you have to be discriminating. Right? You're not going to give the ice cream before dinner. That's discriminating. You, have, you made a judgment. You need to eat dinner, and you need to, right? Either, neither one of them is compassion right is there a place for both of them absolutely so the, we shouldn't think that everything is compassion no there's a place we have to be very discriminating very judgmental and then compassion on your child before dinner and what give them the ice cream you know i mean maybe sometimes in certain circumstances maybe i'm not even saying perhaps sometimes you, you gotta do that right but is that the only way is compassion no how come that's why we have a right hand called chesed and that's why we have a left hand called gvura right because we need to act with both of them um in, in different times different situations and, and you know, different people so yet overriding is the concept of compassion because compassion is very much taking into situation the person their situation in a kind way right very much so therefore that's important yes go ahead alan uh, yeah but you know like in the beginning of races uh elohim had to be be in front because the laws of the universe you know all the physical laws elohim has to do right um, with physical laws and not only judgment but also physical laws and putting all the physical laws and constants of the universe in place bidiuk exactly right exactly so that, so, yeah. that, so that life would be possible and the Torah would be given to man would, exactly. would be possible. Yeah. You know, it's just like everything had to be very exacting. You know? Very uh, decisive, precise, um, uh, uh, like a hair breadth. Absolutely. And that is judgment. That is Gvura. Gvura is very discerning. From being very discerning, you become very, not not judgmental in a bad way, but you have a very good judgment because of discernment. When people who do not have discernment, they have very bad judgment. So yes, uh, the creation was of the physical reality of the world, right, is very precise, and that comes from Gvura exactly and that's why you don't have in the story of creation not one time is the shame havaya compassion mentioned until after creation right that's the first time i think i don't remember the first which i think it's chapter two i know it's first one i don't remember now exactly right but after all of the you know seven days have passed or six days at least um so um yeah absolutely correct the point that i want to make out that i'm making over here is that how important it is that we have we use properly all of our qualities just as that god has all of the qualities above we need to have them down here below so hashem has chesed kindness hashem has uh gvura the uh power the restraint the restraining power um the, 
and also compassion. Now, we spoke about compassion over here, but we, we have to remember that the other qualities are also to be used in a particular time. Here, how do you create compassion from two opposites bringing them together to create a new entity? That is compassion. How is that done? By something that overrides, that overextends, that is um, beyond the two qualities of Chesed and Gvura, that therefore they can incorporate the two to create this new thing called compassion. And with that, folks, with that, folks, um, we have the, uh, Rambam coming up. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine, coming to you from Chabad, Sikh and Kedeshim, Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure.